Welcome little scientists, it's Miss Chisa. Today we're going to learn about a very special animal called the sea otter. Today's read aloud is called Sophie the Sea Otter and it's written by author Amy Tallian and illustrated by Peter Jones. If you haven't already watched the episode where I interviewed author Amy Tallian, do so because she has a very interesting story about writing about sea otters and she's also a wildlife biologist so you'll learn about what she does in her daily life. Sophie the sea otter had a white spot on her face. She and her friends lived in the most amazing place. High in the north and far out to the sea, Sophie lived a life that was wild and free. A great big forest of kelp was her home, which gave her the freedom to frolic and roam. Sophie and her friends played in the water. They splashed and swam. She was such a happy sea otter. She ate snails and clams for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. She'd race her friends to find them. Whoever found the most was the winner. But she loved to eat sea urchins, most of all, a shiny spiny creature, big as a baseball. She popped them in her mouth while lying on her back. They certainly were her favorite tasty snack. Then one day, a fishing boat came. On it was a little boy. Harry was his name. Harry liked Sophie and thought she was such fun. They often played together beneath the summer sun. But the fishermen threw nets and spears when they came. After that, life for Sophie was never the same. Sophie's friends were scared and said, we can't live here. There's nothing left for us but sadness and fear. So Sophie and her friends swam further north, away from their home to a new life they set forth. Harry called to Sophie, please don't go away. He pleaded with his family, put down your spears and let poor Sophie stay. Harry's family simply said, no, no, we don't need those otters anyway. Hmm. But a most unexpected thing happened when Sophie left town, an unexpected occurrence to her home deep down. You see, otters eat urchins and urchins eat kelp. After Sophie and her friends left, their home needed help. The urchins ate all the kelp. The great forests went away. Now there was nowhere left for the fish to stay. The forest was gone the landscape was bare. Only urchins were left, which caused quite a scare. Harry and his family were so very sad. Their new home had suddenly turned so very bad. Harry told his family not to worry. Sophie and her friends can help, you realize, but first we really must apologize. So Harry and his family searched far and wide to find Sophie and her friends and tell them you don't have to hide. Sophie and her friends missed their home so. We'll come back, they said. Now hurry, let's go. When Sophie returned, she found a sad sight. I know what to do, she thought, and ate through the night. No problem for Sophie. The urchins were yummy. She always enjoyed how they tickled her tummy. The number of urchins quickly went down. The kelp forest returned and the fish came back to town. The forest was healthy and happy once more, full of fish, snails, kelp, and sea otters galore. Sophie was happy to be home in her forest made of kelp, and Harry's family learned that a home is not a home without an otter's help. The end. And then in the back, there's a great section for parents to read to the kiddos about the habitat, the population, the diet, and the role of sea otters in the ecosystem. Hope you enjoyed the story. We'll see you again next time. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to like and subscribe to support our channel.